Hey guys, this is huge debate in the online marketing world that it's all about, you know, is paid advertising necessary or is, is organic advertising better than paid advertising? All of these discussions happen online. I'm not sure if you're aware of it or not, but either way, I have brought in a guest today that we're going to battle through. We're going to fight through this because I'm a huge advocate of paid advertising, as you know, and she's a huge advocate of organic advertising. And when she says organic, she's not talking about just SEO. I want to bring out, I'm going to bring on this repeat guest um, that she's going to enlighten us on her process of how she can help attorneys get organic reach. So without further ado, enjoy the show. Welcome to Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you are looking to substantially increase your caseload in the next six months, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's the host of our show, the local business guy himself, Frank Deming. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Frank Deming, the local business guy. Welcome to another episode of Marketing Solutions for local law firms. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day, everyone. I hope you guys are having a rockin', rockin' week thus far. I'm super excited today because I have a repeat visitor to the show. And we're going to duke it out a little bit. We're going we're gonna to put the gloves on, maybe even take the gloves off. But we'll definitely have the gloves off in the the beginning because we're going to duke out the age-old question. Organic versus paid advertising. And there's no other better person to discuss that with than the great Kat Stanzik. How's it going, Kat? Good. How are you? Now you're going to be known for hitting women. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, scratch that. There's a lawyer out there for that. (laughs) We record. We record. (laughs) <laughs> all right cat it's been a while i mean not for me because we talk very often but it's mm-hmm. been a while since you've been on the show so t- just remind everyone who probably so basically the new listeners since you was on here last and the people who have who continue listening to us remind us who are you and what do you do So basically at a high level, I help people make more money online. How I do that is by helping people leverage firework experiences that basically spark more sales conversations and fill people's pipeline without all the hustle, the grind, uh, and really helping those CEOs and um, executives stand in their seat or sit in their seat, you know, without requiring all of their time. So Basically, I'm a marketing and uh, strategist, and I really want to find help people find those ways of generating more revenue without requiring, you know, all of that brain power that a lot of bro marketers are out there trying to say that you need to have. Bro marketers, what's that? Bro marketing. So educators, educators, please. Right. So let me lay it down here, real quick. So if you've ever had that high pressure sales shake you down, leaving you feeling less than 64 step funnel kind of approach, then you've met a bro marketer. Um, so mm. most people don't like to sell that way. And most people don't like to be sold that way. So mm-hmm. this is really about the empowered decision to buy. Um, what I say is that I don't want resentful yeses because the resentful yeses ask for refunds. What I want is a resounding yes, because those are the kinds of clients that are going to get results. So imagine having people already ready to buy when you get on the phone, that is absolutely possible. And there's some things that you can strategically put in place to help make that happen more often. Now, bro marketers, is that a cat stanzic term or is that a term that's out in the industry? It is out in the industry, but it is interesting to see how many people still are not quite familiar with that term. But usually when you hear bro marketer, you kind of know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's a lot toxic. (laughs) Um, and I find that more people, when they find those marketing strategies that are, and I'm going to say it in alignment, meaning that they leverage your strengths. 
This isn't about forcing you into a strategy. Um, you know, it's kind of like wearing clothes that are too tight. It's not comfortable. Yeah, maybe you might be able to fit into it, but at the end of the day, you're going to have those, you know, marks all over your body. What it is about is finding something that works for you and that your ideal clients will respond to because both of those are the key components. So most people pick a strategy and then they try to make their ideal clients respond or they try to make themselves like it. But if we focus on those two aspects first and then pick a strategy, what we find is that we narrow down all of the different you know, available strategies. And right now I have 21 that I've identified as unique marketing strategies we can whittle that down to two or three that are really going to be powerful for you. And, you know, the super scientific approach of if you enjoy doing it, then the likelihood is that you will. And so if we find those lead generation strategies that you really love and that we can start systematizing and creating processes around so that they're delegated to somebody else, then that's how we create that consistency um, in revenue. Cool beans, cool beans. Now, um, Kat, you and I are both marketers. You and I, uh, we love the marketing game. Not to call yeah. it a game, but let's just call it a game for hey, now. Hey, we can have fun, right? <laughs> we love it. We, we, we both love it. However, we have a fundamental disagreement that we've had ever since we've known each other, which, which is Do you quite... like to set it up like we're fighting. <laughs> and I always say that I love what you do. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. That's, I'm just having some fun. Um, but but I I wanna I want to articulate, I wanna share, I wanna put it out in the air of what our differences are in terms yeah. of marketing. There's so many different ways to skin a cat, as you know. Lord. And the way <laughs> to skin a cat, no pun intended. <laughs> um, so let's let's first talk about your way of skinning a cat. So my, I'm going, since this is a show about attorneys yeah. and about marketing for attorneys, I, I want to know, I want you to walk me through the cat Stanzik process of how an attorney can benefit from using your um, uh, services. The firework experience approach. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, you know, SEO for attorneys is fantastic, right? There's a lot of industries that benefit from SEO and there's other industries that don't benefit as much, right? Mm -hmm. Just like everything, certain strategies work better for certain industries or certain people than other ones. So it's important to take that into consideration. SEO is fantastic, especially when you're geo-specific and things along those lines. And By the there's way, ways- Kat, that is the one thing that you and I agree on because I'm an SEO. I love SEO. But yep. Go ahead, continue. Yeah. No. And 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 paid ads and uh, pay per click and all this other stuff are all valid strategies. So I do have to do the caveat of there is no strategy that is dead. There is no strategy that doesn't work. It's just will it work for you and your industry, right? You see, she's just being nice because you guys are listening. But she right. <laughs> before we were off camera, you know, she was fighting. I'm just joking. Like, you I'm suck. Sorry. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, if you're if you're considering SEO and pay per click and uh, you know marketing from that lens, like definitely. I mean, I hugely advocate for Frank on on that. Someone who's in full integrity and alignment with getting his clients' results, you cannot get any better. Um, and when we're looking at how can lawyers take that strategy and you know continue to level up, right? It's kind of like it's the concept of two together makes something even stronger. So organic and paid feed each other very, very nicely. And if you don't have one working, then it can often leave this big revenue gap, if you will. So how mm -hmm. the organic side complements um, the paid ad side is, is that we want to actually look at what it will it take to fill the pipeline. It's not just the people who are ready right now. So, you know, roughly 3% of people, if we're looking at the population have made the decision, let's use a divorce attorney, for example, to get that divorce. And they are actively, they're online. I need a divorce attorney in New Jersey, right? In this zip code kind of thing. And of course, with Frank's help, you're showing up number one on that list of that, you know, long tail keyword search or whatever it is. However, there are people who are considering divorce, people who haven't made that decision, who may or may not get there. So what are you providing in terms of content, in terms of resources 
that allow to create what I call like a holding pond, right? So most bro marketers create a chokehold. If you're not ready to buy right now, then you're, if you don't buy, then you're a loser, right? Mm. So you're either in or you're out. However, there's a 97% of the population that is making a decision. And so if we can get information in front of them, if they can experience you and how your law offices are different than the other Joe Schmo down the street, which you know you are, but for whatever reason, they seem to be more successful, right? If we can get that experience, then that's what actually shortens the sales cycle. And that's what's going to get someone buying faster. But they can't have that experience if we're just checking the general marketing boxes. And what I mean is, is that there's a lot of good marketers out there. You know, if you've ever opted in for something and got it in your inbox, you have been part of the marketing process. Now, the problem is, is that (laughs) most times when you've gotten that thing in your inbox, it's usually a hot piece of garbage. And so what's happened is, is that that person strategically checked the marketing boxes. They had an opt-in page. It converted because they got your email. They delivered the product but they missed the biggest box, which is your experience of the product, of the content, right? Mm. Of the thing. And because they didn't think strategically about that experience, they've lost the sale. So they, they may have spent all this money on SEO. They may have spent all this money on building out content and doing social media and doing all these other things. They did the right things, but because they missed that box, they've wasted their time, energy, and effort. And I'm a hugely against that. Like I hate wasting time, energy, and effort. Um, It's just, it's, it grates my nerves like nothing else. So we (laughs) want to create a community and it's very interesting because lawyers don't typically think of themselves as building community, but they do because part of what happens is, is when you build that community, it's how you turn one client into a referral source that can generate at least five leads. So, so, so just, just so you know, let me, as you know, I do deal with a lot of lawyers. So the, the way they build community typically mm-hmm. is with other lawyers. Right. So they, they'll Doing get those they, power partnerships. Yeah, of, hey, a I'm a divorce attorney. Law, you're mm-hmm. a, estate you know, a state planner. Mm-hmm. You're a, you know, uh, the, the real estate closing office, Correct. you know, Correct. things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what if you could turn your clients into lead sources? Hmm. What if you could activate that? What if you could turn, you know, and it's looking at all the different ways. So it's, can that person, and there's other things too, because different, there are different lawyers do different approaches in terms of strategy. Can that lawyer, can that client connect you to another lawyer? Can that client connect you to a speaking opportunity, right? Can that person who isn't ready to buy from you also do the same, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's about turning it's about looking at more of the opportunity that an individual can provide you beyond just this next sale Mm -hmm. and building out the pipeline in that way. Because when we diversify our lead generation strategies, we're also diversifying our revenue streams. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love the energy. I hope you guys felt it. Cat stands it, bringing it to us live and in Technicolor. Um, Anyway, so (laughs) that's great. That's great. So but let, let me ask you something. I mean, there's, there's a couple of things you you said there that's quite interesting to me. You talked about funnels. You talked about, you know, building that interest um, and, and building community, which is really what I want to dive into. So you're saying, so a person comes in via SEO, pay-per-click or referral. Mm-hmm. Um, you're talking about building a community of clients that then they themselves become referral sources to the attorney. Talk, yeah. talk a lot, talk a little bit about that. How, how does, how does one go about doing it? So, I mean, to be direct, like it's, it's leveraging the strategies that I've created. So it's mm. firework experiences. So a lot of people are out firework there. Firework experiences. You've got yes. the best sayings, Ken. I like that. You know, <laughs> I miss hanging out with you. Right. Anyway. <laughs> so if you're getting a referral, let's say from a lawyer, Right. right. One lawyer to lawyer. That's more like sparklers. Yeah. You're playing together. You kind of have your own sparkler and, and we, right. Like, but it fizzles out pretty fast and it's not consistent. It's not predictable. You don't know when that next referral might or might not come through and whether or not that person's going to come is going to be able to buy. Right. However, mm-hmm. 
if you, we start adding more gunpowder, <laughs> we start looking at the the expanding it, right? If you will, um, what we can do is, yes, that's great. You've got referrals and we want to activate the people around us. And part of what we've done uh, when we're in this space is we haven't allowed people to do this. And part of the allowing means educating them, providing them the information they need, but mm-hmm. also giving them the experience of what it would look like to work with you. That experience, how many times has someone made a decision based off of, I like this person more than the other person? Yeah. And irregardless of fee, whether you were charging 550 or, you know, 650, right? There's not that huge difference or whether you were charging 300, it doesn't matter. It was more about, I feel like this person's going to get the results that I need. I like this person more. I feel this person understands me, that they trust me, that they like me. Right. So looking at what can give that experience to someone, what we want to do is, is essentially deposit into their bank account mm. with the kind of content that we're putting out there by helping them do these quick wins. So mm-hmm. what a lot of people don't think about with their marketing, and I've seen expert marketers not think about this. And this is a piece that most people are missing, which is when we market, we actually want to solve a problem that makes that person a better buyer. Mm. So I'm going to say that again, your marketing should solve a problem for them that makes them a better buyer. And what that means is because they've solved a certain problem with you, now they see you as the next logical step. It is why a lot of lawyers offer that initial free consultation because Mm -hmm. that person feels like they've solved a problem and obviously they're going to need your expert help, but those calls are not scalable. You can't, you can only have so many calls a day. So Mm -hmm. how do you take that approach, that essence, and create a scaled experience of it? And that's what I'm talking about. That's that community building. And once that person has that experience, they can't help but bring other people in. So your clients, your connections, your lawyer referral partners are now doing your lead generation for you for free. Yep. Because you've deposited into their bank accounts with that value. Yeah, I like that. I like, I mean, it's funny. I mean, I was just having fun with you in the, you know, in the beginning, because I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm still a paid ad guy, but that I think is really sexy. It's super sexy to do that. And how it happens organically is, uh, is amazing. So, I mean, you know, but you have to uh, be intentional, right? That's the whole thing. And that's where, you know, that's where we both live and love Mm -hmm. is in the strategy of it. Right. Which is not everything, not you, you don't have a single thing of copy that you just copy and paste and use for every single lawyer. You have these different strategies. You pick the right one for the right person and then you modify it. So it's kind of like taking a, you know, a, a, a piece of clothing off the rack and then you customize it to the person. It is a basic strategy. It's going to be too big or whatever it is, but then we couture it so that it accentuates the right things on the person. And yes, we're still talking about leads. So making sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be clear. <laughs> Just to be clear, we haven't changed the topic of this podcast, um, that that's what we're looking at, but that's what becomes attractive. So really showcasing those strengths because it is about more leads. It is about more referral business and more return business, right? Mm -hmm. So really looking at amplifying those because we all know that it is, it's infinitely easier to resell a client, but what's the system and the process? It's not just pick up the phone and be like, you ready to buy now? I mean, that activates so much sleaze and sales and Mm. no one likes to be treated like a transaction. Yeah. So Figuring out how to have that consistency of top of mind experience without the yuck factor, if you will. Let me ask you a question. Um, So, as you know, most attorneys are very busy. They're in court. They're preparing documents for their clients, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How much time does this thing take? Because, you know, the paid, the paid ad takes them nothing to right. just get them to pick up the phone. Someone calls them, boom, they got a lead. How much yeah, time I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie <laughs> and say that it takes no time, but part of it is, is what's the lifetime value of a client? Is that worth an hour a day? Is that worth half an hour a day of your time to build this, to have mm. other people? Because we're looking at what's scalable. Part of this too is, is 
my process is very focused on documentation because we can't delegate something effectively, especially when it comes to organic, Mm -hmm. if we don't have what success looks like measured. Mm -hmm. And so all of this is absolutely (laughs) delegatable, right? And you can, you can have very little involvement. I have a client right now whose involvement is one hour a month. Mm. That's it. It's completely um, what I call insert your name less, right? So if your name is Tom, it's Tom less. If your name is Bob, it's Bob less. If it's Sue, it's Sue less. So hmm. it's kind of the less approach, which is how can you activate your team and the people on the team to do the implementation and where you just show up where you need to be in the spotlight. We'll be back after a quick break. Hey guys, I hope you guys are enjoying today's content. While I have you on here, I want to introduce you to a promo that we have going on for the spring of 2024 for all legal practices throughout the U.S. I have an outstanding offer that we've never been able to offer before, but we want to do it because you have been an avid listener. We're only promoting this to people who listen to the show. So if you're an attorney and you are an avid listener to the show and you're thinking about possibly opening your own practice, you want to pay attention to this announcement. We are offering a full website with hosting, SSL certificate, online booking service, online appointment uh, management, and more and much, much more um, with a one-year maintenance all for $2,250. That's $2,250 one-time fee, and you have a full-fledged website. If you want to know more about this, uh, just give us a call at 888-416-7752 or send us an email at info at lbmsllc.com. Just make sure that you heard you, you mentioned that you heard it on the show and we'll definitely um, get you that discount. So with that, I'm going to bring you back to the content. And this is a proprietary um thing right this yes. is a this is a cat stanzig developed process yes time time tested and bro marketer experienced <laughs> i mean that's what it that's how that came about was i didn't appreciate this hustle and grind and door to door knocking approach that just left me depleted and yeah. so i wanted to leverage my time more i don't have it i so one resource we're all running out of so there is a lot of sensitivity around how much time goes into it now if you're a solo lawyer right and you don't have team yeah it's going to take you more time if you've got you know partners and you've got resources in terms of team members and admins absolutely delegatable and where you showcase mm. and show up in whatever piece you want but at the end of the day, it all requires work. It's who's going to do it. Yep. And, you know, guys, I can actually vouch for Kat because I've known Kat's, mm, I'd say, eight years now, something like that. At least, yeah. And in eight years, I've never seen one ad come from this woman, yet she kills it every year. So kudos to Kat. So <laughs> she's she's eating her own dog food, if you will, and um, she Would can be teach you. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, she did home cat food. <laughs> meow, meow. Um, <laughs> cool, cool. No, that's awesome. I, I, you know, it was funny when I first met you and you were talking about the thing. I, I, I was not a believer until I actually seen you continuously doing it um, and succeeding. So I wanted to put you back on the show so so we can share some of this uh, information. With, right. with uh you know with uh with with my audience here yeah. um okay so so one hour a day that that seems very doable um so 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 does it we do you think this will work for every practice area you know family law personal injury estate planning uh i don't know tax yeah honestly and and the reason is okay. is looking at where are the different places that someone comes in and understanding it's kind of like the strategy is you got to know what's next. So once someone has an estate plan, what's next? Once they have that, once they have the trusts build up, what's next, right? And have you empowered them to bring in other people? So it's, it is very much this human experience side of things. And yes, does it take effort to put into place? Absolutely. 
But then once it starts getting activated, the the ROI in terms of the time, I guess the the ROT, if you will, generates a big ROI because it has that ability. We all know the value of that referral, that handoff, that warm handoff is so easy to close. Mm -hmm. And so if we've got more of those people in the community and we're not necessarily forcing them to buy this second, but because we've continued to be relevant and top of mind, when that person becomes ready to buy, the logical choice is going to be the person that's been driving value. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And that money objection won't be there because they're already going to be indoctrinated. They're already going to understand the value. And that's a lot of what I see lawyers not effectively communicating is it's beyond just, I'll help you get divorced. Mm -hmm. It's I hope you get divorced without the stress, right? Like what is the real value that you're actually doing? And the problem is, is you're not supposed to know how to do this. You're a great lawyer. Do what you do and let other people who are great at what they do, do what they do. So it's why lawyers aren't great marketers. They're not meant to be. They didn't Mm. get into this to be marketing and sales experts. A lot of them have had to adapt and develop, but I love saying the good news is, is I am. That's what I do is I market and sell. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good thing. That's good. That's, that's awesome. Um, So uh, so let, let me ask you something. So a, a sole practitioner or someone who's just starting, they can easily just hop on, a, hop on a call with you and you, you get them started on this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's all different levels of mechanisms to engage with me. Like there are people who they're at that place where they've got to learn how to start doing it for themselves first, right? You got to fish and you got to eat, you got to, you know, what is it? You got to kill what you eat, you eat what you kill. Um, kind of situation. It's a little more aggressive than I'd like to talk, but, and then it's really looking at where's the scalability and the leverageability in what the process has produced, because Mm -hmm. it's not about, Hey, we got these results, but turning around and being like, I have no clue how they happen. I know one of the things that, for example, you do is you provide reports and metrics so that people can understand how these results were generated so that they can make those better investment decisions. But a lot of people go through and work with experts like you and they just, they have no clue how anything happened. Hmm. And it's just kind of like, it's a little nerve wracking because there's no sense of control. However, if we give that sense of control back to people in their business, then we can look at how to leverage and scale that so that we can get to the level that they want. So the answer isn't you have to have 50 people and 50, you know, um, 50 paralegals on your team or anything like that. You can absolutely be a boutique business owner but you can't do everything yourself. And so looking at where do we generate that revenue to create that time freedom that we all went into business to create. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You said something that, 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 that touched on a pet peeve of mine. A lot of my clients are the smaller firms, you know, they're not the huge hundred million dollar firm. So a lot of them always in court and so and so. So when we have our quarterly meetings or whatever, a lot of times they cancel. They said, just keep the phone ringing. I'm good. I'm busy. I got to go to court. Well, I got to do this. Well, I got to do that. Mm. Mm. It's a very frustrating thing because I'm only getting half of the story when I send them the reports. Yeah. I don't know how many of those they're converting. So I want to know, I want to, you know, you know, selfishly, I want to toot my own horn and say, Hey, you know, I, I just got you, you know, 50% revenue increase there you know but they can't do that if they don't show up for the calls so i mean i'm assuming you get the same issue do you get the same issues on on your side when you have clients that uh don't show up for meetings no they show up for meetings i make it i make it a requirement and i won't give them deliverables unless they show up um just Mm. but part of it is is a lot of the power is what they already have in their hands right so they're not dependent on me because my process focuses on them doing the work and implementing it or having their team do it. Um, But I can imagine long-term having, I mean, and and the reason that it's happening, I I know this for a fact, the reason that it's happening to you is because you create such consistent success that it's almost, it's a, it's a, it's an insult and a compliment in the terms of they just trust you because they know that whatever you decide or whatever you strategically are going to modify is going to produce results. And then the insulting side is they're not bothering taking the time to meet up with you, which if they did, 
could actually produce greater results for them. Better results, yeah. Because right. you know, if they're saying they're closing the leads from online, say at a ten percent, right? Maybe from some tweaks and some ads that I can do, right? I can increase to 15, 20, you know. And what does that do in terms more. of the numbers? Because right. all of that is very compounded um, in terms of results. Yes, so yes, it, yes. it is that catch 22 of, yeah, you're really good at what you do. And if they would invest just a little bit of time, you could even be greater. Yeah. Yeah. I remember this is, I mean, this was a long time ago and it doesn't happen as often as I would like. I had a client of mine who, uh, he was a, f- a family law attorney, actually down by your area. Uh, <laughs> that uh, closed one particular deal that was worth a hundred k. Can you imagine a divorce costing a hundred k? I've heard of that's, multiple stories. That's how he. That was. I mean, at the end, of, I mean, not from day one. I mean, he retained right. them. I think at thirty five hundred, but right, then they right, just kept. Right. But it was one hundred k. That was like, man, I need more stories like this. And that's really that's the reason the reason why I like to have these meetings because I want to hear, you know, what what you know what are you what are you retaining for? How many right. how many closes are you getting? But, right. Uh, I work on that. Um, cool beans. Uh, now let me ask you this: uh, If so, how how do you generate the the business? Like, for instance, okay, I get the whole relationship organic and all that, but you got to have something to build a relationship with. How, how does that, how does that happen? So I use my process. <laughs> Ooh. Um, so what I've done and what lawyers can do as well is I've created an ecosystem of knowing what's next. Mm-hmm. So I have firework experiences. Speaking is one of them. Podcasting is another. And then it's what's next right? What makes logical sense? And so if there are people, for example, there are lawyers out there looking to be on more podcasts. And so something like my podcast mixer, which is complimentary, which I host every month on the second Friday of the month at 12 PM Eastern, you guys see how I'm seating this. Um, and <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> right. So that makes sense for that person. Who's like, look, I'm a lawyer. I have a message. I want to get out there in a bigger way. I'm looking to speak in front of corporate audiences, or I'm looking to actually, I focus a lot on entrepreneurs. So I want to speak into an entrepreneurial audience. I have those people in my community. And so what I've done is I've created a gift So if you are a lawyer who is a speaker or a podcaster or leveraging visibility as an approach to building your client base, right, then this is something that would be a great fit. However, if you're saying, hey, yeah, I really want to know more about what firework experience might be right for me, then I have a workshop that I host, right? And so part of that is is getting one of those, that invitation from me and getting on my list. And so just looking at what makes log- logical sense as to the next gift that I can offer someone in support of solving that problem that makes that person a better buyer. Mm-hmm. And that better buyer may be that that lawyer maybe is never a great fit for me, but the likelihood of a lawyer knowing another lawyer that uses visibility as a strategic approach in their business is pretty high. And if they mm-hmm. had a great experience at my podcast mixer, I'm very confident that they're going to extend that invitation to someone else. And that's what I call the triple crown effect. Mm -hmm. I'm winning because I've got people doing lead generation for me. Mm -hmm. The initial lawyer is winning because they're getting connections in the community to increase their visibility and expand their network. And then the person, then that lawyer who extends it to the next person, that next person wins because they get access to a community they would have never known about and in turn, get a good experience and in turn, get those connections. So we want to create these synergistic wins, right? The triple crown effect where everybody is winning. And it's not just about me getting my next client. It is about the community and their experience Mm. while I still stand in an authoritative and expert position within that community as its leader. Love it. Love it. That is what is called value-based marketing. Love it. I mean, that's a... (laughs) That's genius. I bow to you, my friend. That's awesome how you do that. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's so funny because I'm, you know, I I am such a person that goes about, hey, I, I want leads. I just feed the meter and then leads come in. But Kat's all about value-based marketing, bringing the people, provide value to them, and eventually it comes right back to her. That is 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. Especially I am when having you do a, high ticket sales. Yeah. Especially when you do high ticket sales. There you go. There's a hint to work with cat <laughs> is a high ticket. Just letting you know. Anyway, um <laughs> yeah, cat, cat is cat is, is, is she's the real deal. Um, all right. So, you know, I'm having a great time here, Kat. Um, but I know you're a very busy person, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. I'm going to ask you one last question that I've asked every single one of my uh, uh, in, uh, interviewers or visitors. The guests, the yeah. <laughs> All my guests. There you go. <laughs> my words are slurring here. We just, we complete each other in this yeah. way. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, We're going to get is, paid, right? Yin and yang. <laughs> there you go. There you go. What is your take on the AI revolution? Mm. Um, I think it's fantastic. Um, and I think that people don't understand and they underestimate the value of the human being. Um, mm. that we have constantly gone through iterations of jobs getting lost due to advances in technology. Mm -hmm. But with that, other jobs have become available. So online marketers were not a thing right back in 1990, essentially in 1980s, it, it wasn't a job. Yep. Look at how much revenue has been generated now because of the internet. The internet was going to kill everything. And then this was going to kill everything. So I'm always very weary of these very extremist statements when people go and, you know, expand. What I've seen is, is that AI is not ready it can help people get into creative modes and, and support them. But at the end of the day, unique thought and creativity cannot be created other than outs than with the human mind. And so mm -hmm. there is empathy and connection that only a human can sometimes see in terms of pattern. And so it really taps into, you know, instead of looking at how it's taking over, we really need to look at how we as humans are different and what is the value that we can bring leveraging technology because it's not going anywhere it's here right mm -hmm. so wishing it away isn't going to do anything positive and so <laughs> it's how do we integrate with this and leverage it effectively and again a new opportunity for us to reposition ourselves because this trend happens at least every five to ten years something new comes along and you have to relook at your system and your process and your approach and see how you can, again, stand out. It's also huge opportunities for you to leapfrog competition. So if mm. you're resisting things, usually that's where the biggest revenue opportunity is. So mm -hmm. I'm not resisting it. I'm seeing where I can use it and leverage it as part of my business because I will be able to leapfrog competition using this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting take on on AI, it's a different. I, I love to ask that question because everyone has a different opinion. Yeah, I, but I agree. Uh, I don't think it's ready yet. No. Yet is the operative word. Yes. Um, I think it's getting very, very good. Um, mm -hmm. It's. Um, I saw an uh, an image of uh, Morgan Friedman. Um, I mean, it looked. I had to. I had to take a double take. Yeah. And it, you know, and, and and it because it was a little robotic how he was talking. And yeah. that's what gave me the clue. It's scary. It, I mean, just like anything yeah. in life, it can yeah. be manipulated and used for evil and corruption. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that also means that now we're going to have people who are developing code to spot fake AI stuff, right? So there's that yeah. whole engineering opportunity. That's a whole slew of jobs that are going to be created in that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Google has this whole thing where it, um, like if you write a blog post, um, you can actually, it has a detector to know right. if it was AI. Uh, well, developed. and a lot of AI is, is and, and is they won't, they won't index plagiarizing. It. Yeah. Yeah. They won't index it because it, it was created by a bot. Now the trick to that is take whatever AI gives you and kind of repurpose it or re redo it. Um, re add your, your yeah, personality, add back your onto personality it. Yeah. to it. And then once you've done that, then. Google well, I think of it as a cake, right? Which right. is AI will produce the same vanilla cake over and over and over again, but humans can come in and it's what's the frosting color? What's the flavor? What are the, what are the decorative accents, you know, that you can put on there? And that's, you know, personality that's branding and all of that. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like there's 
so many people who do what you do and who do what I do. So how do we stand out? It will, it's our presence. It's our beingness. It's the value that we provide in terms of marketers. And Mm. so that's the opportunity to increase your market share is to one, you have to get more people knowing that you exist. Mm -hmm. Right. And so how do you do that? And then continue to remind them that you exist. So I'm going to disagree with something you just said there. Um, I, I agree that there's a lot of people that do what I do. Very few people do what you do though. I got to tell you, very few people do what you do. Not, not, not the way you do it. Not yeah, the way that ton- I do it. But if, if I were to coaches, like vanilla yeah, yeah. it down to right, like a base right. cake, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. And just say, I help you generate leads online. Right. Like, yeah, that, yeah, that. Right. But, but, but not, not your process. No, no, no. Way. My process no. is very unique. This is very a different. very unique thing, which is why you're on this show. I want to expose that to as many people as possible. Speaking of, what's the website? Um, so it's actionincubator.com. I'm actually really excited because I'm going through a complete overhaul right now. And I just mm-hmm. did, you know, branding pictures and all that. So I'm very, very excited about that finally coming out. Um, and then the one that I shared in terms of the mixer, if that's something that's interesting for anyone who's listening, you can get your reserve your spot. It's complimentary again, um, every mm-hmm. second Friday of the month at 12 PM Eastern, and you can find it at leadbossmixer.com. Okay. So actionincubator.com and leadbossmixer.com. Yep. And since you and I are connected on on LinkedIn, what I'm going to do in the show notes, I'm going to share those two links in the show notes, but I'm also going to share your LinkedIn. So in case someone has any direct questions, they can go on to, to your LinkedIn, shoot you an inbox. She doesn't mind inboxes because nope. that's how she makes a living. Right. So, uh, <laughs> well, and make sure you let me know that you heard me here with Frank because I'm yes. going to send some kudos. Yeah, 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 yeah. Please do. Please do. Um, but, um, before I let you go, though, Kat, is there anything I did not ask you that you think would benefit the audience? Yeah. Shoot. Should you pick, which one should you pick first or which one should you pick between in terms of ad, paid ads and organic? You know, I didn't want to go there because I said I was going to keep the gloves on, but go ahead. You can go ahead and do So it. <laughs> my my answer is, is you know, it is, especially when we're talking about lawyers, right? Yes. I actually do believe it's a chicken and egg situation. Mm. I don't think it's an either or. I really think it's an and. Um, I think that someone who's brand new and really just trying to figure themselves out, starting with organic makes sense because you have to have a message and you have to have something to drive them to. But mm-hmm. lawyers, because it is already an established need, right? Like if you're a divorce lawyer, it's pretty clear what you're providing in terms of service, right? If you're an estate planner, it's pretty clear what you can put paid search around. And so I really do think it's an and situation and that together they really amplify and feed each other because paid can lead to organic and organic can lead back to paid. And they kind of build on each other to really create a much stronger revenue pipeline. Okay. So the answer to that question is both. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And that's a, that's a, that's a, that's awesome. Cause I agree. I agree. You got to do both. If yeah. you want to dominate any uh, network, a, a, any uh, local area or, or even globally, you have to do both paid and organic. Um, and there are no two people on this planet better at doing both. And Kat Stanzik and Frank Denning. Um, so <laughs> I think that's a mic drop for this episode. I want to thank you, Kat, for joining um, once again. And if uh, if we can, and, and if there's any questions that develop as a, as a, as a result of this, I will definitely let you know so you can actually answer them directly. Um, and um, that's all. That's it for now. So until next week, folks, this has been Frank Deming, the local business guy, and you've just been blessed by the great Cat Stanzik. Take care, everyone. Until next week. Thanks for 
listening to another episode of Marketing Solutions for Local Law Firms, the podcast that provides you with all the latest digital marketing tools, tips, and strategies you will need to implement in order to stay ahead of your competition. If you would like to know more about the topic we discussed in the show today, reach out to Frank and his team at 888-416-7752 and schedule a discovery call with one of the marketing consultants. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, send an email to podcast at lbmsllc.com and we will put you on the schedule. With that being said, until next week, make it a successful digital marketing day. Peace out.